I'm Mark, a 46-year-old average office worker. I know it's sudden, but I want you to hear my complaint. My complaint is about my ex-wife who divorced me two months ago. My ex-wife, Quinn, is two years younger than me. We met when she was a new employee at the company I work for. At the time, Quinn was so beautiful that anyone who walked down the street would look back at her. I won her heart, and my male colleagues envied me a lot. However, the only good thing about Quinn was her looks. She could not do housework, was greedy for money, and was a bit selfish. She was the only daughter with late birth of my in-laws, and she was spoiled, which was probably the reason for this. I guess my in-laws started to think it was too much. They started giving her piano and ballet lessons when she was in junior high school. They tried to correct Quinn to be a graceful woman, but in the end, Quinn's personality was never corrected. However, I married Quinn, knowing her character. I thought that once we had a child, things would change a little. I didn't pay much attention to it at the beginning of our marriage. But when our child was born, she left all the childcare to me. She was even spending my earnings on other men. But I didn't leave Quinn because of my in-laws, especially because my father-in-law, Oscar, begged me not to. Whenever Quinn had caused a problem, Oscar would say to me, Please, wait at least until our grandchild becomes an adult. After our daughter Riley was born, all the love my in-laws had for Quinn was focused on Riley. I guess they didn't want to be separated from their beautiful grandchild because of Quinn. Of course, Quinn is their child after all, so no matter what kind of scum she is, they didn't want her ending up on the streets. Well, whatever the reason, Oscar was like a second father to me since I had lost my father at an early age, so I respected his wishes as much as I could. Whether it was Quinn spending my savings or having an affair with another man, I tolerated it to a certain extent. Of course, there were a few times when our marriage was in danger. After 10 years of marriage, we rarely spoke to each other. Still, I kept my promise to Oscar and did not divorce her. But one day, exactly 20 years after I married Quinn, Riley turned 18 and was attending college in another state. One major incident occurred that led to my decision to divorce Quinn. That day, I was at work as usual. I was now in a position to have my own staff, and in order to fulfill my duties as a manager, I was spending much less time at home than I had in the past, so I had no idea what Quinn was doing during the day. But we had been in the Cold War for so long that we weren't really interested in what either of us were doing. Well, that's that. I was in the office when I got a call out of the blue from my mother-in-law, Shirley. It was the first time I had ever received a phone call while I was in the office. Quinn has that kind of personality, but my in-laws were very attentive. I guess they didn't want to call me on a weekday. When I picked up the phone, Shirley seemed quite upset. I decided to try to calm Shirley down and listen to what she had to say, but no matter how much I tried to calm her down, Shirley showed no sign of calmness. Of course she wasn't. The phone call was to tell me that Oscar had passed away suddenly. Did you call Quinn? I asked. I've tried calling her several times, but I can't reach her, Shirley replied. I later learned that Quinn was meeting a young man at a hotel at this time. Shirley told me that Quinn had known about Oscar's poor health for about six months prior to this. I was busy with work at the time and had not kept in touch with Oscar much. I've asked him how he was doing from time to time, but he probably didn't want me to worry too much, that he only said, I'm fine. Even so, why did he not tell me that he, whom I love like my own father, was in the hospital? I understand that Quinn and I are only a married couple on the outside, but if he wanted to tell me, all he had to do was say a few words about it. Besides, what has she been doing while her own father was in such a state without visiting him? Even though she's been somewhat patronized because of her own bad behavior, he has raised her with a lot of love and affection until she became independent, and she owes him a lot, doesn't she? I don't have a dad, so I don't know, but in a situation like this, no matter what you put off, isn't he the first person you should run to? So I decided to divorce Quinn. I've known for a long time that she's not a good person, but I never thought she would be the kind of bitch who would put her time with a man she was having an affair with before her own parents. After my father-in-law's funeral, I confronted Quinn with the divorce papers in my mother-in-law and daughter's presence. I'm done with you. Today. I'm divorcing you. Don't you ever come home again. Divorce? Wait a minute. What are you talking about out of the blue? It's not out of the blue. I've been thinking about this for a long time. I've been holding out on you because of my promise to Oscar, but I've reached the end of my patience. Quinn was alone in her confusion. 
No one else was going to stop us from getting divorced. No one there had accepted Quinn as family anymore. Shirley was so sad over the loss of her beloved husband that she couldn't think straight, but at least her daughter looked at Quinn with disdain. Our daughter was a grandfather's girl. No wonder she couldn't forgive Quinn for betraying her grandfather. Anyway, I told Quinn, Don't come back to my house again. I'll come back later to get the divorce papers. You should fill your part down by then. And Riley and I left my in-law's house. On the way home, my daughter was crying. I guess it was only natural. Her beloved grandfather had passed away, and at the same time, she had to be reminded that her mother was such a horrible person. A few days after Oscar's funeral, Shirley asked me to come over to her house. At first, I thought it was going to be about the divorce papers. However, when I arrived at the house, for some reason, I saw an unknown man in a suit. The man greeted me and my daughter, and then offered me his business card. Apparently, this man was Shirley's lawyer. The name of the law firm was written on the business card. We are gathered here today to discuss the distribution of your father's estate. We will now open the details of the estate for your review. The lawyer then took out four envelopes from the small safe that Shirley had offered. They were addressed to me, Shirley, Quinn, and my daughter. Oscar wasn't insanely rich, but he owned a large plot of land that had been passed down to him from his ancestors. I guess it says what he is going to do with the land. Frankly, it's just a bunch of wasteland and wood areas that I don't see a dollar's worth in holding on to, but I was prepared to protect Oscar's land for the rest of my life if that's what he wanted. Perhaps my daughter had that intention too. However, as soon as I saw the envelope that the lawyer took out of the safe, I was in doubt. As we waited to open the will, the daughter was checking the sealed part of the envelope in detail. Then, immediately after, he looked up and looked around at the faces of the people present, one by one. After a deep sigh, he opened his mouth and said, There are signs that the seal on the will has been broken. Has anyone here opened the will without permission? I didn't. I didn't know there was such a thing until just now. I don't know either. My father and I don't live here, so there's no way we could have done something like that. I had control of the safe, but I swear to God I never opened it. I was told beforehand by my lawyer that opening the safe would invalidate the will. One by one, we gave our alibis. All our eyes eventually ended on Quinn, as if we were breathing in unison. I couldn't think of anyone else who would be stupid enough to do such a thing. Did you take the liberty of opening Oscar's will? No, of course not. Why would I do that? Well, let's leave it at that for now. For now, we'll just have to check inside the envelope. At the lawyer's queue, we read the wills in turn, and everyone except Quinn checked the contents of the wills. Each will had roughly the same contents. In summary, it says something like, I give all my property to Quinn. We were very familiar with the person who wrote this will, and it was written in a quirky, cute script. Isn't this mom's handwriting? It was Riley who took the initiative. I mean, I guess she was too curious and couldn't resist. As for me, I wanted to keep it in for a little longer before humiliating her. Well, that's just the way it was. You seriously thought you could monopolize Oscar's legacy in such an obvious way? What are you talking about? I didn't do it. Well, this is obviously in your handwriting, and the envelope and the paper are completely different designs. It's obvious that you took out the contents and replaced them with another one. You're doubting me? I mean, we are going to be strangers from now on. That's none of your business. No, I haven't filed for divorce yet. After that, Quinn continued with her excuses. She refused to admit her guilt at all. Shirley, Riley, and I... We're all so disgusted with Quinn that we forgot to get angry. I guess the lawyer couldn't stand to see us like that anymore and he interrupted. Forging a will is a crime. You can be imprisoned for up to five years. What? Wait? Imprisonment? Then Shirley said, Well, I guess we should talk to the police. They'll do a handwriting analysis and we'll know who did it. Wait, wait, don't go to the police. Soon after that, Quinn confessed. She thought that if she sold the land, even if it was not worth much, she would have enough money to play with men for a while. What did we do after that, you ask? We went to the police, of course. Shirley was so angry at that time, she would never forgive her, even if it was her own daughter. In the end, Quinn's crime was only referred to prosecutors, but Shirley disowned her and I divorced her as planned. So, the divorce finally came true, but I still have a lot I want to complain about. I just wanted to vent my frustrations here. Well, I guess I feel a little better now. Actually, after that, we found another will in the closet at my in-law's house. Thanks to it, my mother-in-law inherited the land left by my father-in-law. 
The will said, If Quinn misbehaves after I'm gone, I will not give any of my land to her. When my mother-in-law died, it was accompanied by a statement that she would convert the land to cash and give it to her granddaughter. I guess my father-in-law knew what Quinn would do after he passed away. That's what Oscar is all about. However, I wonder how Quinn will live on her own from now on. She has no significant job experience, her parents have kicked her out of their house, and even her daughter has given up on her. Oh well, I'm going to forget about her now. I'm sure my father-in-law is telling me to do so from the heavens.